couple of questions about what caching is and um, how we got into it and everything like that. So I thought we would do um, a little introductory geocaching 101 video while we were here at the St. Louis Arch. Um, we went all the way up in the top. Um, it's uh, 192 meters up, um, which is very, very tall. Um, and you feel it while you're up there. Um, right here on this spot, there are some virtual caches, um, which are virtual. Like, you can't actually go and pick anything up that's physical. But you can go and answer questions to have your visit to the arch count. And they have them all over the mall, the National Mall as well, because they're not allowed to place caches on the mall. Um, but anyway, caching in general is where you use um, a GPS um, or an app on your phone. Um, we typically use a mixture of Spine Arlds, um, uh, GPS, <laughs> Garmin, and um, my iPhone uh, geocaching app, which is a one-time pay of $10 and it's totally worth it. And you use that GPS to go out and find um, caches, which are, they could range from something this big, very tiny, it's called a nano, and all there is is room for a piece of paper inside that you sign your name on. It's a roll of paper. Um, and they can be as big as, um, we found one that was a five gallon bucket um, called the White Elephant Cache in the Shenandoah Valley, and that was full of white elephant presents. It was very random. Um, but you can also find ammo cans, it's a typical one like the one we found yesterday. And then inside are um, little trinkets for kids to find and collect. Um, and sometimes there are travel bugs. And this is a travel bug that we picked up in Norway. It's um, some kind of tree fungus that they have painted and decorated to look like a pirate. And um, this one's goal is to go to um, lots of parks. Um, and so I'm going to drop it off in Missouri somewhere because one of its parks on its list is um, Yellowstone. So I figured Missouri was pretty close to Yellowstone. And attached to the little keychain is a dog tag. And on this dog tag is the travel bug symbol. This is a really old dog tag. Um, and then there's also a serial number. And the owner of this travel bug can go online and track where, it's, where his bug is gone. Um, for instance, I have one. Um, its goal is to go to Norway. Um, to visit um, Hunderfossen and um, there's a giant statue of a troll there and I want its picture taken with that big statue. Um, it went around the east coast a bit, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, um, and went all the way up into Minnesota and then out to California and then someone out in California picked it up and took it to Switzerland so I'm tracking it in Switzerland now. Um, it's a very nerdy hobby but it's lots of fun and it gets you out in, um, and sometimes even in urban areas. There's one hidden near the Shakespeare Theater in Chinatown in DC. It's right out there where anybody can see it if they paid attention. But they can also be out in woods or parks that you didn't even know in your area existed. Um, my dad just moved to Austin, Texas and he's using caching as a way to get to know his new city. Um, and Svein introduced me to it um, a couple years ago, and he's been doing it since, what was that? 2006. 2006. Um, and he has lots and lots of caches logged, over three or four hundred now at this point. Um, and I have over a hundred. And um, it's just a lot of fun. It gets you out there, and it's like a secret society, you know. Only we know where the things are, and uh, we got to keep it hidden from the muggles. Um, that's what the normal people are called, are the muggles. Um, anyway, if you have more questions about geocaching or want to know how um, to get into it more, feel free to message either Spine Arnold or myself. And the website is uh, the main website for geocaching is www.geocaching.com. That's G E O C A C H I N G.com. Um, just let us know if you have any other questions. Bye bye.